it's fast, good looking, and it even sounds fairly decent bone stock, making this one of the best Corvettes ever made. Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's a 2024 Corvette C8. It even has vertical doors, and although I want to share the good, the bad, and the ugly on this vehicle, it's actually one that I've been really anxious, really excited to get to drive, and that's coming from someone who's driven a whole host of 500 to 1,000 horsepower cars. There's just something special, something different about the C8. So today, I'm going to review it for you. You can expect to see a walk around. All the specs, initial driving impressions, 0 to 60 on GPS, and then my final thoughts to help you decide what you do with the 2024 C8. And huge thanks to Twin Falls Chevy for letting me borrow theirs for the day. I'm going to link this one below if you're interested. Otherwise, let's dive right in with this review. But if you're new to the Chevy Corvette, you need to know that these first came out back in 1953, so they've been around for just over 70 years. And in fact, they're still assembled in Bowling Green, Kentucky, so they're still homegrown, which I do appreciate. Heck, you can even get a museum delivery of your new C8 if you want to pay a little bit more coin for that option. But these are really cool. What's not cool is because of typical inflation and things getting more expensive with times. Now that this is the fifth year of this C8 generation, because it did come out back in 2020, it's a little bit pricier than it was back then. The big deal back in 2020 was that these started just under $60,000. And by just under, I mean literally like five bucks less. But now they're basically a $70,000 car and that's for a base 1LT trim level. But this one specifically is actually a 2LT, so it has bucket seats and it has a few extra goodies, making this one a little bit closer to $80,000. And that's before the extra options that this one has. But even though the base level Corvette is still fairly affordable for the performance and everything that you're getting in this package, the moon really is the limit on how much you can pay for a Corvette. Just the other day I saw a Z06, marked up to about $200,000, which I know is not uncommon, unfortunately. But you also have the power options. So you could get a Z06 that has almost 200 more horsepower than this, or the new for 2024 E-Ray that has about 150 more horsepower, a front electric motor. So yeah, the first hybrid Corvette and the first all-wheel drive Corvette. All in one, there's basically a Corvette for almost every budget, as long as you budget at least $70,000. But with the curves that this thing has and the design language, seriously, this is the best base model Corvette I have ever seen after seeing a couple Z06s in person and in the wild. This really doesn't look that noticeably different. The main difference is the extra inch and a half on each side of the fenders on the rear. But with how wide these fenders are for those inlets to get some cool air, this seriously is the best looking widest base model Corvette that I have ever seen. Seriously, just put this up to a C7 or especially a C6 and notice how flat those Corvettes are on their side. This thing has a lot of grooves, a lot of curves, and a lot of angular lines. And if you like anything that you're seeing today, please consider liking this video. It not only helps this video get shared, but also helps YouTube know that you want to watch more stuff like this. Thank you. And while the rear of Corvettes have always looked really good, really aggressive, I feel like the engineers at Chevy really had a lot of fun making this one, making it even flatter, even more bold facing, because this is the view most people are going to see. They even gave it some raised eyebrows, some angry eyes, and just a tiny little bit of a stern frown while having the face of confidence right there. Interesting. And although Chevy did decide to migrate the engine from the front to the back for the C8 generation, making it a much different level of performing car, I am thankful that they decided to keep these all as convertibles. So this one obviously is the target top. You can pick that thing up, remove it, and put it in the back where there's a slot for it. Or you can pay a little bit more money and you can get the hard top convertible, which unfortunately on the hard top convertible, you don't have this magnificent view of your engine through the glass, making this really feel and look that much more like an exotic. But what's interesting is these are split about 50-50 for what people buy, and Corvettes most years sell about 20,000 to 46,000. What I find interesting is the average age of the Corvette is still nearly 60 years old. So I guess that's the population with the most money, and that's the population maybe having the most fun with their C8 Corvette. But unfortunately, there is some bad news and there's something that I need to address. So if you have a weak stomach or you're a diehard Corvette fan, please just skip ahead about a minute and you should be good. Otherwise, grab your New Balances, your blue jean shorts, and your grilling spatula because there's a couple, there's a couple potent issues and things I've noticed just driving it over here. And I'll, of course, get to the actual driving experience for you guys in just a little bit. But this is about a 500 horsepower car with an eight-speed DCT 
you know, it sounds really good on paper. It feels really good in real life, but this is the most mild Corvette for about 500 horsepower that I've ever experienced. So although it's exceptionally fast, as I'll talk more about later in this video and in an extra driving impressions video that I'll probably post in a couple weeks, it, it is a little bit more tame. It's kind of like the thousand horsepower Plaid where it's one of the fastest things that I've personally been in for accelerating, but you don't have the sensation of being scared. You don't have the sensation of losing control and some of those other little factors that almost make driving a really high performing car a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit fun because it kind of pushes you to your limit. This vehicle, although being really well balanced, extremely well balanced, it doesn't scare you the same way that a different 500 horsepower car would. Heck, even a Toyota Supra with a rated 381 horsepower kind of feels a little bit more dangerous than this thing. And then the other main issue that I want to mention is being a mid-engine car, it's going to be a lot more expensive to work on. There's going to be a lot more reasons why you might actually have to have the engine pulled out of the vehicle and do just a bigger amount of work, either for basic modifications, if you're into that, putting headers on a boost kit, anything like that, or if there's any other reason, you know, to really work deeply into the motor, you're going to have to pull it out for less involved things than you would on a front engine car. Anyways, now back to the main review. But because the C8 is so efficient and so stable, really nothing I've done with it so far makes it feel like I can legally push it past about three tenths on the street before I'm doing things that are ill-advised and demonstrating behaviors of a hooligan. This car is seriously meant for a racetrack. Even the steepest of apex of curves that I've taken in it so far, they're nothing for this car. They don't even make it break a sweat. But a base Corvette is only about 3,600 pounds with a 42% front weight distribution and 58 on the rear. Basically the opposite of what a front wheel drive car would be. And then this has a payload capacity of 423 pounds. So between you, your occupant, your stuff in the front, and your stuff in the hatch in the back, that's how many pounds of stuff you can carry in this specific spec. And then they're only about 15 feet long, which is actually pretty compact with having about a nine foot wheelbase. So it is really planted on the road, especially where this is 6.3 feet wide and only four feet tall. It's very unlikely that you're gonna flip or roll over or lose control with, the, with what the physics of this car truly are, even more so for putting the power down. This has a really aggressive 489 final drive ratio if it's a non Z51, but if it is the Z51, it's even more aggressive at 517. They still have about five inches of ground clearance, but thankfully this one has the front lift, which is actually a really cool feature to have, and I've used it a couple times today. And then it can do a full circle in roughly 36 feet. There's just three last things to mention here, starting with the wheels. It is a staggered stance in typical Corvette fashion. This is a 20 inch wheel back here, wrapped in a 305, 3020, and it looks fantastic. And even more than that, it's flush with the fender. So if you had to get a wider wheel, you could and it wouldn't already be obnoxiously sticking out. Meanwhile, the front is an 18 inch wheel wrapped in a 245, 35. And equally so, it's placed really well. There is more fitment. You could lower the car if you needed to. But the gas door, it's located on the driver's side as well. This carbon fiber one doesn't seem to open up as easily as probably what the factory one is. And then it's not locking so the bums can attempt to steal your premium fuel in there. But it's an 18 and a half gallon tank. This is rated for about 16 city, about 25 highway. So your max road trip and range is about 462. And then the last thing is this is the key. You can pop the front. You can pop the rear. And you can lock it and remote started from out here as well. But it doesn't seem like you can start it when the things are open on the front and the rear. So otherwise it's the typical double lock and then double unlock and lock. Ooh, that sounds good. Anyways, you can leave this in your pocket, proximity key features, and then you can get into the vehicle through the little bit of a handle right here. And honestly, guys, probably carefully opening the doors has been my biggest challenge today. It does open just enough that you can probably sneak in there, but you have to open it up so far for the hardware so that you don't rub anything the wrong way. And then once it's up, you can start to lift the door and it actually is a really smooth process overall. And it feels very professionally done. The door panel is gonna be shown a little bit different than it typically is. It's all soft touch materials. I'm sure they're gonna age really well. Nothing creaky on my drive over here. Bose speakers are actually really bassy. And then you have all of your controls, your locks, the button to open the door electronically. You have your frunk release, your trunk release, a little bit of storage right here. And then Stingray on the door sill. You have the manual release if the power goes out to get out of your car. This is a heated, ventilated bucket seat. 
and it actually has really good bolstering on it. And then it is powered, of course, you have aluminum pedals, the OBD2 port is down there. Electronic parking brake, the lighting display for the, you know, the instrument panel, instrument cluster. Heads up display, info, more brightness. Typical Chevy stock behind the wheel. Otherwise, in case this is valuable for anyone, I will show you the process of me getting into the car, which this height of car isn't that difficult for me because I do daily drive a Miata, but then this is the harder part for me is pulling the door down, especially with one hand. And then once it's down a little bit, then you can just bring it right over and the window pops up. But sitting inside this new 2LT is honestly such a nice experience. I'm 5'11 and I fit really comfortably in here and it feels like there's nothing but nice materials, which is not what could be said for Corvettes of the past. Even the C7 that I recorded last summer, that thing of being a few years old, it was already really creaky and making a lot of noises that you wouldn't expect in such a new car. But this feels so far absolutely solid, although it is brand new, so we'll see how it holds up. But it's a flat top steering wheel with the race stripe down the middle, just like how it's flat bottom. Alcaterra, it's heated, it feels really good. Voice and volume controls on the right. The Zorro button, which is where you can basically have your custom sport mode set up on the left with adaptive cruise settings. The horn, typical GM part spin horn. It's loud, it does the job, and you don't need to change it out. And when you fire it right up with the push button start, it roars to life. The display is very diverse and you can change a lot of stuff. In fact, some of the electronics in here are some of the new stuff that you couldn't get on the older Corvettes, but just going with the toggle on the right of the wheel, there's a few things that we can do and look at and change. If I go through the Zorro button, you'll see that it becomes more performance oriented. And then I show you more on the driving about when you change the different drive modes, but it does change the whole display, which is really cool. So there's a lot of customization. There's a lot of fun that you can have just through the electronics, but you still have a physical dial to turn up and down the volume. This screen looks really nice. It's not the fastest I've ever seen, but it does a really good job. And hopefully the software can be updated and stay relevant for a long time. Otherwise, this is how you go through the gears, park, reverse, neutral, drive, manual mode with those paddle shifters. And honestly, it's kind of fun and it was very innate, very easy to get used to. And then you have traction off, you have the front lift. If you guys can look at the hood, let me zoom in real quick. Yeah, hopefully you guys can see that. Pretty cool feature and I'm glad that this is offered just like higher end sports cars. And then you have the backbone, the spine of the Stingray which it's mostly about heated seats, ventilated seats, climate controls for you, and then for your passenger down there. But overall, it's a nice experience. Not a lot of storage in here, but thankfully there are two plugins, more bass speakers in the back and a spot to hold your phone, a huge window to check out the engine if you want. There's of course the three clips to remove it and make the target top go away. And then you have the backup camera, which is digital and offered on all Corvettes now. Some speakers, OnStar settings, garage door settings, and then you have some LED lighting in here when you check yourself out. And does it slide? Ooh, it even slides. And with that said, let's turn it off and I'll show you the hatch. The back of the Corvette seriously looks so good. And there's a couple convenient ways to open up the hatch and get to your stuff and your engine. You can either push the button that's underneath the Corvette emblem next to the backup camera. You can push the button that's on the door panel, or you could just use the remote. It's kind of like a soft lift and soft close. It's pretty cool. And then back here in typical Corvette fashion, you can fit a minimum of one golf club, probably two with how deep this trunk is. It's actually 12 and a half cubic feet, which is substantial. Those are the clips to hold the target top, which is really cool. And then back here is the engine. It's a pushrod V8. It does have active fuel management, unfortunately, and it can deactivate cylinders, but it makes 490 horse the way that this is configured if it's not the active exhaust with the Z51 and all that. And that horsepower comes on at 6450. So you really have to rev it out to get to your nearly 500 horsepower. And then torque is 470. And that comes on at about 5100 RPM. So quite a bit higher than a typical V8 would be, but still it looks impressive. And honestly, I don't really want to stop staring at it, but I have to, to show you this. This is how it closes soft touch style, pretty cool.
a little bit slow on the snap, but there we go. And then this also just lifts up nice and conveniently. There's no latch or anything like a typical hood that you'd have to search for. And then you do have a way to get out in case you're imprisoned in here. You even have LED lighting to help you find it. And then there is your charger, your trickle charger. And overall, it's a few cubic feet. You have your reservoirs right here for windshield washer fluid. And honestly, it's a really nice space. And it's about midway through the front of the whole bonnet area on this Corvette. Otherwise, it's easy to lower, similar to the back, and it lowers itself. Pretty cool. But for those of you guys who are still with me for this video, let's teleport and time travel to one of my favorite roads. I'll show you how it drives. We'll finally get to the zero to 60, and then I'll meet back here to give you my final thoughts. Initial driving impressions of the C8 Corvette. Under normal acceleration, this thing feels pretty reasonable. The visibility honestly isn't even as bad as I've heard other people say. You just have to get used to it. Don't plan on looking out the rear view mirror. That's what the digital one is for. But when you have to get up to speed in your C8, Especially at low speeds, it's absolutely brutal, especially when you're coming off from a launch or a dig with 60% of weight over the rear, you're really gonna keep some really good traction. But keep in mind, when you do turn traction control off, you're gonna get a lot of wheel spin because 500 pounds of torque, basically, is a lot of power all at once from this LS, or I should say LT style engine. But again, it's composed, you know, driving at 40 in track mode, clutch does a really good job and then the brakes even a half pedal slows you down really well and I love that similar to the Supra this car is tuned to downshift and help you out with some engine braking but when you go to the track mode and you turn it down to something a little bit more mild maybe sport get a little bit of a graphic which I do think is cool or what about tour touring is a good mode and it's even more composed it feels like everything just loosened up, even in touring mode. The turn-in is really direct, really immediate. We're gonna go on the brakes one more time, wait for this car to pass, and then we'll do just a light acceleration, even in tour mode. Steering is really sharp. It's kind of numb, you don't feel a lot through it, but it is sharp as in when you point the car in a certain direction, the car is gonna go there, and it's gonna go there pretty quick. Oh yeah, but even in tour mode, you have a good sense that this is 500 horse. And even where we're at, you know, a lot of altitude today, about a mile above sea level equivalent. And this road currently is just a random country road. It still puts the power down really well. The traction management system seems pretty advanced because it's not letting me unnecessarily spin. But if I do turn it off, the traction control, and maybe I do put it back into sport mode, or even, let's go more aggressive, let's go to track mode. And we're gonna get a lot of wheel spin, probably even without a launch, just going off of idle. Oh, actually that held. That was really good. It roars, even being bone stock, you know, the exhaust, it sounds fantastic. And honestly guys, even in the last two weeks, I've driven a 700 horsepower supercharged five liter truck. I've driven a lot of 500 to 1000 horsepower vehicles and there's not very many that I actually have been more anxious to drive than to finally get behind the wheel of a 2024 Corvette or any of the C8s, honestly. I think I've been more excited for this car than I even was for, you know, the very first Hellcat I got to drive. But with that said, let me get to the private road. Let me see what I can do zero to 60 and then we'll get to my final thoughts. Zero to 60 in the C8. Keep in mind, density altitude puts us at over a mile above sea level. So this one is down on power by 25%. I have it in track mode. I'm gonna do a brake rev, but I'm leaving traction control on because I already tried it without, and it was nothing but a lot of wheel spin. So let's see what it can do. And true zero to 60 came in at 4.16 seconds. With traction off on my private road, which isn't sticky, I don't think that's very bad, especially when it's down on power by 25%. That's just what a mid-engine car can do base model sub 500 horse and we're still doing a 4.1 second true zero to 60. That's pretty impressive. But here are my final thoughts. My overall final thoughts of the 2024 Corvette C8. Even though this is just the base model as if that's a bad thing. Maybe that used to be a bad thing but on this vehicle 
It's absolutely not. This is faster than a supercharged C6 from a generation or two ago. This is better handling than some of the best sports cars that you can buy at any price point. This is seriously such a fun ride, and it's one that I have really been looking forward to. Is it different than I thought it would be? Yeah, I was actually a tiny bit nervous for this one, and I usually don't get nervous for vehicles. I've driven things that accelerate to the plaid level. I've driven a lot of Hellcats. I've driven a lot of other powerful vehicles, but for some reason, this Corvette, the mighty C8, that's now mid-engine. It's actually the first mid-engine car that I think I've ever been in, at least that I've driven, and it did not disappoint. This is absolutely worth every dollar that they command. I don't agree with it, but I do understand why people used to pay a markup on these back in the early COVID days. Some people would pay 20, 30 grand over for it, which I never would accept. I would never do that personally, but I understand why some people did. It's probably kind of like my Miata experience. Once you drive it, you can't stop thinking about it. And this is absolutely one of those cars. If you can afford it, I think you should consider one. So go to your dealership, find a used one, go test drive it. And if you like this video, like this video, comment your thoughts and opinions below, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want this really nice, hardly used one with vertical doors, check out Twin Falls Chevy. I'm gonna link them below. They're a great dealership and they'll work with you. But otherwise, until next time, I wish you guys the best. Take care.